let me tell you something about Jesus Christ's faith. One day, Jesus Christ woke up and he found himself in a shitty barn that was in a shitty city that was in a shitty country that was on a shitty planet that was in the shitty part of the Milky Way galaxy. The left arm over there on the edge. Surrounded by shitty people. In the case of the shepherds that visited him, this was probably literal as they stepped in a lot of sheep shit and brought it with them wherever they went. Now all of this might be fine if you're a shitty person. No, but Jesus Christ was not a shitty person. He was a sinless person. He was the son of God. His parents had to make him aware of that. Or let's just say his parents read him stories from the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures. They knew he was the Messiah of Israel because they knew that his birth was supernatural. But I don't think that they realized he pre-existed. That he had a glory with the Father before the world was. I don't think Mary and Joseph knew that he would make peace with the entire human race through their son. I don't think they knew that he would reconcile the universe. That God would reconcile the universe through Jesus Christ, through the blood of his cross. And I don't think they thought he would die on a cross. But back to the topic at hand. Jesus Christ eventually came to know all these things. Talk about being burdened with knowledge. And as I said yesterday, he is surrounded on all sides by pretty much shit. Now we know that he went to the mountains to pray to his father all the time. Because life was, how shall we say, frustrating for him. Surrounded by unbelief. Surrounded by stupidity. And I'm going to let you know what Jesus Christ heard when he prayed to God. Let's talk about our prayers for a second. We pray to God all the time because we're stuck down here and we can't do anything about it. We can't get out of it. And we're surrounded by idiots as well. And we're surrounded by shit just like Jesus Christ was. It's a little easier for us because we're a bit shitty ourselves. That's the problem with us. That's why we have it better than Jesus Christ had it. But let's, say, let's analyze what happens when we pray. All right, we pray to God, we call out to God our Father. This is, uh, this is my experience, and I'm thinking this is your experience as well. This is what you hear when you pray to God. Nothing. Ah, but Jesus Christ, he's the Son of God. And he's a pure, sinless person. But now I want to tell you what he heard when he prayed to God every morning of his life going up to the mountains to be alone with his father. This is what Jesus Christ heard. Nothing. How about that? How about that? No, really. How about that? He heard no more than we hear. 
Can you imagine? You would have to once in a while because you got no verbal, uh, verbal, uh, mm, you got no verbal mm, thing. You got no verbal, yes, you're right about everything, Jesus. Yes, you're right about everything. Guaranteed. You know what's happening. You're on the right track. Keep going. No. This is what he did here. He heard the leaves rustling. He heard the birds. He heard the waves coming up on the Sea of Galilee. He felt the sun on his back like we do. And he had this God consciousness that he knew his father was running everything. What is this except faith? This is faith. Remember, faith is an assurance concerning things which are not being observed, or if I may add to the scripture, heard. The idea is the perception. There was one time well, there were actually three times audible voice came from God. Now, you know you know that God is inaudible, so God used spokes angels. I just coined that term today, spokes angel, to voice, to give voice to his um, announcements. Now, I'm going to John 12, 27 through 30. This is the only time, I believe it's the only time, period, but it's the only time we hear in Scripture that God verbally answered His Son. John 12. Let's start with verse 27. This is Jesus, and I love this passage. I mean, it hurts me, but I like it because misery loves company, I guess. Jesus says, quote, Now is my soul disturbed. He's getting closer to the cross. I told you about the cross yesterday, what he experienced there. He says, Now is my soul disturbed. And what may I be saying? Father, save me out of this hour. You see, his hour is coming. But therefore, I came into this hour. Then he says, Father, glorify thy name. That's verse 28 of John 12. Then listen what happens. A voice then came out of heaven. I glorify it also and shall be glorifying it again. Simple sentence. I shall be glorifying it also and shall be glorifying it again. This was a direct audible answer. And what Jesus says next blows my mind. Jesus answered and said, not because... Oh, by the way, I missed a verse there. The throng that was hanging around, uh, they hear this declaration from heaven. And they said, a thunderclap has come. Others said, a messenger has spoken to him. I told you, he's surrounded by idiots. Well, the second guy wasn't so stupid. A messenger has spoken to him, that's true. The messenger brought the word of God because God is absolutely inaudible. The first guy, a thunderclap? Jesus answered and said, not because of me has come this voice, but because of you. Not because of me. That illustrates his faith because he didn't even need to hear. He didn't even need to hear an audible voice. Such was his faith. He heard God in the wind. He saw God in the sun and the plants growing. I mean, even at his baptism, this was another time where the Holy Spirit spoke. Remember, the Holy Spirit landed as a dove on his shoulder after he was baptized by John. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Doesn't even talk to him. Just says it to the, the bystanders. This is my son. Speaks of him to them, not even directly speaking to him. The only time I know of. But he heard what we hear mostly, which is zip, nada. He heard nothing when he prayed. To me, and then he says, this voice was not for my sake. What? I would think that you would, this is what I first thought, like, wow. He'd be like, yes, finally, I hear something. Well, I think it was comforting. <laughs> Scripture doesn't say that, but of course it would be comforting to him to hear this voice. 
But the voice, voices are faith destroyers. This is why I don't want to hear a voice. I've never heard a voice from heaven. Don't want to. I'd rather have faith. Faith is great, great, valuable thing. Even our faith is valuable. It doesn't accomplish anything. But it's nice to know that God is giving us the belief in what Jesus Christ did, right? So I don't want to see anything. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want beings showing up. I don't want miracles. I don't want healed. I don't want... To levitate I don't want to walk upon water I don't want to multiply my lunch I don't I'm saving it save that stuff for later for later now faith is a great thing I'm told you I was gonna to go to more verses and I am at the end of the week here yeah I'm good on time all right so look what the look what the NIV did the Romans 322 that was my launch uh, verse Romans 3.22, let's start with 21. Yet now, uh, apart from law, a righteousness of God is manifest, being attested by the law and the prophets, yet a righteousness, of, a righteousness of God through Jesus Christ's faith, through Jesus Christ's faith for all and on all who are believing. Look what the new idiotic version did with this, the NIV. This is, their, this is from their text, verse 22, Romans 3. This righteousness is given through faith in Christ, in Jesus Christ. This, I'm actually reading the version. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. To all who believe. It's for all and on all who are believing. The, the knowledge of the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ's faith is on those who are believing. But it's for all. They missed the word for in here. They just didn't translate it, the NIV guys, the new idiotic version. But once again, there's a footnote here because they must have not been able to sleep at night. So if somebody said, we at least got to put a footnote in here. So the footnote says, or through the faithfulness of, that is Jesus Christ, or through the faithfulness of. Eh, it could be, well, probably not, but eh, we can't sleep at night, so we got to put this in here. This is how it reads in the content, in the text. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ. The righteousness is given. Your righteousness is given through your faith in Jesus Christ. That's what the NIV says in Romans 3.22. But they couldn't sleep at night. So they said, or through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Now, at the end of the week here, let's look at more verses that talk about the faith of Christ. Uh, let's go to Galatians 2.20. I was in Galatians 2.16. Just to review for you, we also believe in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by the faith of Christ and not by works of law. Not by works of law. So if faith in Christ is required, it might be said that that would be a work of law. We're justified by the faith of Christ and not by works of law. If somebody's going to say we're justified by our faith in Christ, then that could be construed as a work of law. It's something you have to do. You might as well add it to the 613 commandments. Galatians 2.20, starting with 19. For I, through law, died to law. This is Paul that I should be living to God, to God, period. With Christ have I been crucified, yet I am living, no longer I, but living in me is Christ. Now that which I am now living in flesh, I am living in faith that is of the Son of God. This is really good, it shows the mechanics. I'm living in faith. Paul is not denying that he has faith, but that faith is of the Son of God. That is, it came from the Son of God, Paul is one of the cars on that train, and the faith of the Son of God is pulling him right along. And he's with the program. That's what faith does for you. It puts you with the program. It's not the program. It puts you with the program. That was Galatians 2.20. Now let's look at Galatians 3.22. Starting in ver with verse 21. For if a law were given that is able to vivify, that is, give life beyond the reach of death, really, then righteousness were out of law. 
but the scripture locks up all together under sin that the promise out of Jesus Christ's faith may be given to those who are believing. You see, the promise of Jesus Christ, the promise is given through the promise of all these treasures and all these blessings. The train of blessings we have in Christ Jesus comes through Jesus Christ's faith. And it comes also out of his faith, that the promise out of Jesus Christ's faith may be given to those who are believing. Jesus Christ's faith is the engine. Those who are believing latch onto it and they benefit from everything that comes out of Jesus Christ's faith. All right, now Ephesians 3.12. Ephesians 3.12. Speaking of Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and and access with confidence through his faith. That's the only reason we have confidence. This is in really dire and exaggerated opposition to the old days when no one had confidence to approach God. Moses approached him on Mount Sinai through thunder and the lightning. The high priest once a year approached him with fear and trembling going into the Holy of Holies, hoping he did everything right so he wouldn't be struck dead. But now, is different now and we need to appreciate this we have boldness and access access to the holy of holies uh, that, that's we don't appreciate how amazing this is and how contrasted how contrastive it is to previous experiences our Lord in whom we have boldness and access to who to what to God with confidence we're not shaking, we're not trembling, we're not worried at all. We just march right in through his faith. That is the faith of Christ. I got one more passage here, Philippians 3, 9. Philippians 3, verse 9. Paul speaks of how he has forfeited everything, everything that was an advantage to him in this life. He counts as dung that he should be gaining Christ and may be found in him, not having my righteousness. See. The topic du jour is righteousness, justification, same thing, being made right. So Paul does not want to be found in him having his own righteousness, which is of law, and law never could make anyone righteous. That has been proven in experiments done with the nation Israel. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is from God for faith, our faith, to know him. Our faith lets us know him. The power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, conforming to his death. I'm going to go through that again real quick and then I'm going to let you go. Paul wants to be found in him not having my own righteousness. Not, I don't want my own righteousness because it doesn't measure up not having my own righteousness, which is of law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness, which is from God. It's from God, this righteousness. He grants it, but God does it through an avenue. He does it through an intermediary, and that is the faith of Christ. That's how God manifests his righteousness. The cross this to us the righteousness of God and the wisdom of God. The righteousness which is from God for faith to know him. So it comes down the line. Righteousness from God manifests it, displays it to the universe through Jesus Christ's faith. And now God gives us faith to know him. That's the purpose of our faith, to know him what he did, what he is, and what he will do.